The People's Republic of China defines its economic system as socialism with Chinese characteristics. A more appropriate description would be state capitalism. Despite having long since abandoned socialism, China continues to appropriate Mao-era language and terms when describing economic plans, such as five-year plans and the mass line. Having long been the most populous country in the world, China has been able to establish itself as the world's top manufacturer of goods, and, until 2015, it was the world's fastest-growing economy. Despite being the world's second-largest economy by nominal GDP, much of China remains underdeveloped, and most of the industrial workers that form the base of their manufacturing economy are underpaid and work in poor conditions. China ranks 73rd in the world for per capita income. China's manufacturing economy is built upon an energy policy primarily driven by coal. China is the world's largest consumer of coal, as well as the largest net producer of greenhouse gases. But it's also the largest producer of renewable energy and is far from the largest per capita emitter of greenhouse gases. In recent years, China has begun to establish manufacturing zones in various African and Southeast Asian countries using local labor in a move heavily criticized as modern imperialism. As for future economic plans, current President Xi Jinping's Chinese dream entails achieving a moderately well-off society by 2020 and a fully developed nation by 2049. However, whether China will be able to sprout a middle class and a service economy, the two, necessary, the two necessary factors to lead a nation from industrializing to developed, is yet to be seen. A large portion of Iran's economy is based on its oil and gas exports. More than half of Iran's economy is centrally planned, with the government allocating funds for many businesses. The government of Iran itself owns hundreds of businesses. The Tehran Stock Exchange has been one of the world's best performing stock exchanges for almost 10 years. Iran is considered an energy hub, as it contains significant portions of the world's oil and gas reserves. However, the Iranian economy is weighed down by double-digit employment rates and rising inflation. In recent years, since the development of the Iranian nuclear program, Iran has had harsh sanctions imposed on its oil exports reducing oil revenue and forcing the economy into a decline in 2012 and 2013. Along with the dec declining economy, the Iranian rial began to depreciate. President Hassan Rouhani, elected in 2013, signed the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action with China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. The Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action limited Iran's nuclear program in exchange for reopening Iran to international trade by removing some trade sanctions. Now that these sanctions are being lifted, cheap Iranian oil is lowering gas prices around the globe. Whether Iranian sanctions will be reimposed during the next U.S. President's administration will have a major effect on the development of Iran's economy and, as history has shown, its government as well. These two nations face growing contradictions in their economic and political ideologies. How can China glorify and champion the communist-era working man while simultaneously undermining him with low wages and perilous working conditions? How can Iran both economically succeed through American sanctions lifting, yet villainize it? Only time will tell how these economies continue to develop and resolve these contradictions in the future.